What can you eat? Or what should you eat on the carnivore diet? Kind of two different questions. Well, let's see if we can clear this up. First thing you got to understand, there's no such thing as the carnivore diet. It doesn't exist. There's no such thing as the ketogenic diet. There's no such thing as the vegan diet. There are a hundred different ways to do any of these dietary pathways. Right? There are a hundred different ways to do keto. You've got people who do junk food ketogenic diet, right? Um, you know, Quest birthday cake uh, flavored protein powder with hot dogs and cheese, right? You know, those little processed craft cheese singlets that taste like plastic. Uh, you know, there's a there's hundred different ways to do the if it fits your mouth diet or if it fits your microwave or if it fits your uh, macros or whatever. Uh, you know, and there's people who do lots of junk food or seeing how many pop tarts they can eat every day. And then there's people that are doing chicken, broccoli, rice, and sometimes a little bit of sweets here and there, fitting in some ice cream and whatnot to fit their macros. There's a hundred different ways of doing a vegan diet, right? You've got the nutty fruitarians who are living off of just fruit. You've got um, whole foods, plant-based, Dr. Greger's daily dozen bowel movements diet. There's so many different diets out there, so many different ways to do every one of these diets, and carnivore's the same. There's no one the carnivore diet. A carnivorous diet is a diet that is based on animal foods. For most people, it can be a very, very powerful, for many people, this can be one of the most powerful elimination diets that you could possibly do. You are eliminating every single possibly irritable food. Every single possible irritant is being eliminated on a carnivorous diet. You're eating animal foods. The most easily digestible and assimilable and highly bioavailable nutrient dense foods that you can find are in the animal kingdom, right? We're talking grass fed beef, eating nose to tail, ruminant animals, beef, mutton, goat, right? These are some of our favorite meats. Obviously they're not available everywhere. And a lot of people are doing a carnivorous diet that's based on mostly ribeyes. All right, you got Dr. Sean Baker. He likes slamming some ribeyes. He throws some eggs in there. He throws some salmon in there every once in a while. For the most part, he's doing grain-finished beef because it's fattier and he enjoys the taste of it. And that's how Sean Baker does it. You've got people like us. We've been promoting nose-to-tail eating, right, eating the entire animal since 2014 here on this channel. And that's what we like to eat. We like to include um, some of my favorite foods are bone marrow, liver, heart, right? Beef heart meatballs, which we've uh, got the, got lots of organ meat recipes in the new book, The Carnivore Cookbook. Zero carb, uh, zero carb recipes for people who, who really love animals. Uh, we show you how to make like beef heart meatballs in there. We've got a whole section showing you how to make liver, how to prepare organs like heart, how to use things like bone marrow. So those are my favorite foods. I like marrow with a nice ribeye, right? So I have my ribeye and I'll have a bunch of bone marrow on the side. Maybe I'll add a little bit of butter. So I end up eating more of a high fat, ketogenic style carnivorous diet. But that's if I'm trying to maintain weight. Something else I like to do every once in a while is include a little bit of carnivorous carbohydrate. So I'll use raw whole milk, fresh raw milk. I like getting it from A2 cows. We've got some friends who've got some nice brown Swiss cows here. And we like to get several liters of this whole, unpasteurized raw milk. And if I'm trying to gain weight, I might take down three liters of that, sometimes even more in a day. So that's a way to boost carbohydrate intake up if you're trying to gain weight. I know a lot of former vegans are out there who have been undernourished, who have been underweight historically, and you want to gain some weight. Using something like whole raw milk, or raw honey, right? Raw, unfiltered, unpasteurized honey. These can be great foods for increasing your caloric intake and increasing the carbohydrate content in order to put on some weight. Because most people that end up doing a ketogenic or carnivorous diet have very, very low hunger. It ends up making it very easy to lose body fat. Some of us aren't trying to lose body fat, but are trying to rectify issues that we've had, long-standing issues with gut permeability which the Paleo Medicina group over in Hungary has been treating with what they call a Paleolithic ketogenic diet. Their version of carnivore is similar to what we do, nose to tail, high fat, 
they actually include more pork and other things that I'm not really so into the pork. I don't feel as good when I eat the pork. I don't think it's as nutritionally superior of food as grass-fed ruminants. But the Paleo Medicina group is using nose to tail eating of mostly animal foods. And then what they do is a two to one ratio, two grams of fat for every one gram of protein you're intaking. So if you're taking in 100 grams of protein, they want you on 200 grams of fat in the Paleo Medicina group. Now that is a very, that's more of a medicinal diet. That's a therapeutic approach to a ketogenic, what they call paleolithic ketogenic diet. So they're including lots of fat. They're doing it in a very high fat ratio. I think that if you're doing two grams to one fat to protein, that ends up being even above 80% fat calorically. Whereas my diet usually tends up to be about, uh, tends to be around 70 to 80% calorically fat. That doesn't mean you have to calculate your macronutrient ratios, but for the most part, if you're doing a carnivorous diet, I usually recommend making sure you're getting sufficient fat. So it's more akin to a ketogenic diet. It might be a little higher protein for some people. Guys like Sean Baker smashing loads of ribeyes aren't really concerned with adding too much fat. Like I rarely see Sean Baker adding butter. He eats enough ribeyes to get all his fat from them. He actually prefers grain fed, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, Sean, but Sean Baker actually prefers grain fed because it's got more fat and a lot of people like the taste of grain finished beef. Personally, I'm all about supporting grass-fed, grass-finished, but if you can't afford it, I would way rather have you eating grain-finished ribeyes than importing all these heritage foods from South America like quinoa, right? chia, flax, quinoa, all these vegan-style, you know, supposedly sustainable crops that are actually destroying the environment through the monocropping, monoculture uh, growing conditions. And this makes people here unable to even afford them, right? You're exporting all this quinoa from South America. South Americans can't even afford the quinoa that they grow to export for the affluent vegans in the West. So far more sustainable, in my opinion, even though those grain finished cows are eating the, uh, the Monsanto patented seeds and these crops, the soy, the wheat, and the corn, those are destroying the topsoil. Right? Uh, even though these, um, these animals are finished on that, they're eating mostly grass for their whole life. If you feed an animal, a ruminant animal, too much grain, they begin to get sick. And these producers understand where to cut it off. So, grain finished, I don't have a problem with it if that's what you can afford. Right? Other people are doing more of a like carnivorous junk food approach. Now, well, that's not ideal for me. And I don't really like supporting these fast food joints. Uh, but a lot of people will do, you know, like Flying Dutchman's from, uh, from In-N-Out, right? My buddy Sean Baker, he, every once in a while, he'll go by In-N-Out and he'll get like 10 or 12 Flying Dutchman's, uh, which is just burger patty with cheese. Uh, it's funny, my, actually my first job, uh, when I was 15 years old, my first job was in, uh, was an in In-N-Out burger. Uh, I got to a level three, I was a level three employee at In-N-Out. Shout out to uh, Gabe, my former manager, who used to hire a bunch of hot older girls that <laughs> who worked with me. Uh, that was a funny job. So, grain finished. I don't have a huge problem with it as far as getting your health back. Of course, I prefer grass-fed. Um, now, there are a lot of people out there trying to put their own spin, right? Put their own little spin on a carnivore diet and say, I invented this. This is mine. This is mine. This is the one way to do it. And uh, I'll be the first to tell you that that's nonsense, right? Anybody that tells you there's just one way of doing it and that I've got all the information and no one else knows what they're talking about, they're fleecing you, okay? So there are a hundred different ways of going about it. We like to include other funky foods. Like I really like to do high meat, right? High meat being fermented meat, right? aged meat where so i'll take a uh, liver i'll chop it up i'll put it in a jar fill it about halfway full and i'll let that sit for several months right the uh putrefication process the fermentation process actually turns this into a living animal-based probiotic a lot of people are wondering oh i get some probiotics on a carnivore diet a lot of people are thinking i gotta take my probiotic pills i'm not into all that stuff but living foods fermented foods meats Fermented animal foods like kefir, stuff like that, that can have its place in a carnivorous diet. In fact, a lot of the milk that I drink is clabbered. You know, raw milk, it doesn't go bad. Raw milk doesn't get bad in your fridge. 
You leave raw milk in the fridge or out on the counter for a few days, it clabbers. It creates almost like a kefir type yogurt substance with live bacteria and those living enzymes and it is an amazing food. Great for digestion and can be a good addition if you're not you know, super, super sensitive to dairy and if you're not trying to lose weight, adding something like that can be great on a carnivorous diet. Now if you're trying to lose weight on carnivore, you don't want to be adding you know, two grams of fat, you don't, have two, you don't want to have two grams of fat for every gram of protein. If you're trying to lose weight, you got to understand that when you're in ketosis, when you're on a low carbohydrate diet, you can burn fat from your body or you can burn fat from the plate. You put more fat on the plate, you're going to burn more of the fat that you eat. You put less fat on the plate, you're going to burn more of the endogenous fat stores. Your body stores fat ubiquitously throughout it. Right? We get told by the media that saturated fat is so bad when that is the fuel source that your body stores in the most abundance. You got fat, saturated fat all throughout your body ready to be burned. So, if you're trying to burn body fat, you don't need to add as much butter as somebody like me who's been on a weight gaining phase is going to need. You're probably not going to want to drink whole raw milk, right, if you're trying to lose body fat. So if you're trying to lose body fat, stick to the meats, the fatty cuts of meat. You don't want to just restrict fat completely, right? Don't eat like top sirloins where there's no fat, no collagen in there. Uh, eat the fatty cuts of meat, the nutrient dense parts of the animal. Throw some organs in there if you want to, but do you need to? No. no. However much I'd love to say, you need to eat organs, right? We put a whole section of how to use organ meats in the carnivore cookbook. But we understand some people just aren't ready to go there. We understand that some people don't like them. Some people are programmed or have programmed themselves to think that they're nasty. So if you don't want to eat the uh, organs, you don't have to. There are people who have been surviving and thriving off a carnivorous diet for like 20 years. The Anderson family. Charlene and Joe Anderson. Uh oh. Hey, Ribba. I got a chicken in here. Leave it alone. No. The chickens come in the house, and the dogs, the dogs are starting to get upset. Um. Hey, doggies. Hey, guys. So Joe and Charlene Anderson have been living with their kids off of mostly grain-finished ribeyes for like 20 years. And they're doing fine. They don't include any organs. In fact, they say that when they did include organs, it didn't even help. They might have even felt worse. All right, so um, do you need to eat it cooked or raw? There's other people out there saying, if you don't eat it raw, you're an invalid. If you don't eat it raw, you're not doing it right. Hey, look, some people love things like tartare, right? Like steak tartare, um, carpaccio. I mean, we show you how to make steak tartare or uh, beef tartare. And... Um, and other raw meat dishes in the book, in the Carnivore Cookbook, which is available now. There's a link down in the uh, description below. But that doesn't mean you have to eat raw meat all the time. Some people like it super rare. Some people like it medium rare. I know Michaela Peterson, she was eating her steaks medium rare and getting incredible healing effects without including any organs. Now, I think now she is including a little bit of liver. She told me she does now enjoy liver. So that's cool, but did she need it in the beginning? No. Some people end up gravitating towards these things. It takes a little bit for some, uh, for some of us to come around to using these different parts of the animal. So, you know, if you haven't been eating bone marrow for years like we have, if you haven't been including liver in your diet for years, you don't need to jump into all this right away. You can ease into it. There's no one way to do it. So what can you eat on a carnivore diet? Animal foods. Foods that come from animals. Foods that are nutrient dense that have those nutrients in their most bioavailable form and that don't have all these accompanying plant toxins, these defense mechanisms that plants have to keep us from eating them. These plant toxins, these anti-nutrients like phytates, lectins, oxalates, salicylates, these foods that do not have tons of fiber that is abrasive to the gut that many people are not able to handle. Right? So many of us have had thrashed gut microbiotas. So many of us have been through so many rounds of antibiotics by the time we were adults. Right? So many of us have taken so many hits to our health from both environmental, medical, and dietary factors. So many of us have just been trashed in our guts and our ability to digest can be limited. That's why focusing on the nutrient-dense animal foods 
brings people such good results. It's the ultimate elimination diet. So focus on the animal foods. Get the fatty cuts of meat, the ruminant animals being the top choice, right? Eat the fish, eat the eggs. I love raw egg yolks, I eat them all the time. Sometimes I'll have some uh, like steak tartare with raw egg yolk. I love it, it's so good. Right? It's basically just raw meat and raw egg. A lot of the times I'll just cook up a ribeye, throw some raw bone marrow on the side. I'll have a little bit of high liver before the meal, kind of gets my digestive juices flowing, acts almost like a digestive bitters or a digestive tonic. Um, and that's how I eat. Sean Baker smashing world records over 50 years old, 250 pounds now of pure beast. He's eating ribeyes. Throws a little salmon in there every once in a while, has some ground beef. So he had some beef tartare recently too, which is cool. He's, he's eating what he wants and what he wants to fuel with and what satiates him. So find the animal foods that satiate you. Find the animal foods that leave you feeling good at the end of the meal. Focus on the fatty cuts of meat, the fish, the eggs. If you want to include the organs, awesome. And repeat. Right, when you first start out, you can have an adaptation period, just like with a ketogenic diet. There's an adaptation period and you might not feel optimal for a few weeks. And Michaela even had a hard time for like six weeks until her digestion got better. So if we're really messed up in our guts, it can take time to adjust. But a diet based primarily off of animal foods is being shown to be so powerful for so many different things. Everything from type 2 diabetes to Crohn's, ulcerative colitis, IBS, schizophrenia even. All right, a ketogenic diet's been used to treat schizophrenia without drugs. Paleomedicina is using this as an adjunct therapy to cancers. They're even treating type 1 diabetics. All right, so look into the Paleomedicina group. Look at what some of these other thought leaders in the area are doing. Guys like Dr. Sean Baker and Dr. Paul Saladino. Everybody's got a different way of doing it. Mark Bell and Chris Bell, they've got their way of doing it. We've all got our own little angle. Find what works for you. All right, so we got the, uh, the carnivore cookbooks finally available. We just, we just released this last week. Zero carb recipes for people who really love animals. Not a single plant was harmed in the making of this book. Remember, this is an ethical carnivore book. No plants harmed. All animal foods, all zero fiber foods. And we even show you how to make some, uh, there's a couple recipes with carbs. Uh, there's even an uh, uh, ice cream recipe using raw cream. You don't have to use raw cream, but we prefer to. And uh, using some raw honey to sweeten it. So our kids really like that one. This is good weight gaining foods. So how should you do carnivore? Well, it depends on your context. It depends on what you prefer. And it depends on why you're doing it. So don't get caught up in the muck. Don't get caught up in the cult guru diet game. Figure out what works for you in your life. Don't turn the dang diet into an idol. Find what works in your situation. Check out the carnivore cookbooks available at primaledgehealth.com. Get off the dang computer. Get off the social media. Kill your freaking Facebook account. Get off the television all the time. Go out in the real world. Make real communities, right? Source foods from your local producers. Make real connections and real contacts and real friendships in the real world. Like our dogs do it over here. And go live. <laughs>